Well, howdy, y'all. Hunky T here. Now, I'm not going to bother to put up a uh, intro part to this here video. I think it's just going to speak for itself. I'm not going to take too much of your time off here. But this is just some kind of pagan nut jobs. Y'all decide for yourself. Here you go. And we assisted the Lake County Sheriff's Office. In fact, they did a remarkably good job. Four graves were robbed on December the 5th in the Edgewood Cemetery in Mount Dora. And the Lake County Sheriff's Office was in call to investigate, and they obtained DNA. And they d obtained DNA specifically from a cigar. And we're so when the, the DNA came back, they ran it through CODIS, and it led them to Brian Tolatino. Brian Tolatino is 43 years of age. Well, when upon investigation, Brian Tolatino led them to Juan Lopez. Juan Lopez is 29 years of age, and he owns the Bushkan Karate Center and After School Child Care Program on Dundee Road in the area of Winter Haven. So they were working this robbery of a grave, and subsequent to figuring out that Brian lived in Davenport and Juan lived in the Lake Wells area, we were led to a, an address of 5170 Timber Lane Drive in Lake Wells. We served a search warrant there at a house. We served lots of search warrants. But for the first time that I'm aware of, what we found was a Palo Mayambe shrine. And you can see the pictures of it there. There were seven skulls in, in this, if you will, shrine. Of the seven skulls, we determined five of them were human skulls. Two of them were plaster replicas. Now keep in mind, when the graves were robbed, there were four graves that were robbed. There were four skulls taken. We still have not identified, and the Lake County Sheriff's Office, and we're assisting them, is working to try to identify where the fifth skull came from. In addition to that, we found an alligator head. We found goat heads, goat skulls, chicken bones, raccoon skulls, and many other different artifacts, religious artifacts. So we got to researching. We talked to Juan and Brian, and they both confessed. And I'll tell you what they did in just a second. But a research shows us that the Palo Mayambe uh, religion is a religion that's solitary, a solitary religion with no house of worship. Our research further told us that this is a black magic art that needs body parts in order to worship. And they prefer to have skulls. Palo Mayambe is reported to be the evil twin sister of the Santeria religion. So when Brian and Juan confessed, here's what they told us. They said that the spirits, the spirits had led them to the cemetery. And once the spirits led them to the cemetery, there is an interesting thing that occurs. We said, well, how did you end up with those graves? And they said, well, the spirits led us to those graves. But before they could remove the skulls and the body parts from the grave, they had to perform a ritual, a ceremony, and they did. They would drink Bacardi rum and spit it out on the ground. And then they would smoke a cigar and ex exhale the smoke. And the purpose of that was to protect them from the spirits. 
Once they broke open the graves, they started to remove the remains. When they would remove the skulls and the remains, then they would put orange peels back in the cemetery. And the reason they did that was so that the spirits would not leave the skull and go back into the grave. So that was to prevent the spirits from leaving the skull. They said it was their preference that they have the graves of heroes. And that's exactly what the spirits led them to. And when asked about why a hero's grave, they said because the spirit is much stronger in a hero than it is a normal person. And also when you have the skull of a hero, the spirit is not only stronger, but it can protect you from Tell evil. You that three of the four graves were veterans of the military. They, in fact, were heroes. One was Calvin McNair. He was born in 1935. He passed in 1992. He was a Marine. He was buried in his Marine dress blues. He was a police officer. And he was a police officer in Anasta, Connecticut. They took his skull. If that just doesn't make your blood boil, I don't know what does. A hero, a Marine, who was laid to rest in his military blues, a police officer, someone who had served and protected, they took his skull. And then there was Albert Carr. He was born in 1896, the same year my grandmother was, and he passed in 1988. Albert was a sergeant in the Army, and he served during World War I. He was a hero. They took his skull. And then the third veteran was Henry Britton. He was born in 1929, and he passed in 1983. He was an Army hero. He served in Korea. They took his skull. The fourth lady was not in the military. Annie Fennell, she was born in 1935 and passed in 1998. But she was a caretaker of seniors and those that were infirmed in life. She had a servant's heart. They took her skull, her arm, and her hand. So let me introduce you to the religious leader. Juan Lopez. I've already told you that he confessed. I've already told you that he runs an after-school daycare in a karate center. He has no criminal history. But Juan used to be also a police officer in Puerto Rico. And he said that he resigned because the agency was corrupt. But he's known his religious leader title is known as Tata. His social media, where he bra brags or speaks of his religious dealings, he referred to cemeteries as holy sites and shopping centers. Did you hear what I just said? He complained in the United States that it's difficult in getting human remains to practice his religion. Well, let me tell you, we don't have any skulls laying around in the county jail, and that's where he's going, or that's where he is. If he has. And then there's Brian Tolatino. He is a practitioner, and he's known as Poleros. He's the one that used the large bar to break open the cemeteries after Juan the Tata performed the religious ceremony at the gravesite late at night or early in the morning in the darkness of December the 5th or 6th. But unlike the Tata, the Poleros has a criminal history for bank robbery when he was in Puerto Rico. He also had cocaine charges 
and grand theft charges out of Orange County, Orlando, it probably should come as no surprise to you. They dropped those charges. But he robbed graves. Any grave is horrific. But they sought out and intentionally went to the graves of veterans, of heroes, of war heroes that fought for this great country we have today. The investigation is still underway, but it's never okay to violate the law in order to practice any religion, and they clearly violated several laws in the state of Florida. Are there any questions? Well, there you go, my friends. Another deep dive into the depravity of the human soul. Now, I imagine, you know, you all think, well, everybody's entitled to the religion. But paganism and all that kind of ritualistic crap, I don't know. Uh, you got to draw a line somewhere. You know, if you're not worshiping a deity of some kind, you know, you're just, uh, I, I don't know. I, I It just boggles my mind. I, I, is this like the 21st century or the second? I don't know. Anyway, y'all have a blessed day. You take care of yourself. You take care of each other. And we'll see you soon. Bye for now.